Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Madison Charlton from MRC Tech and now today we're going to be taking a look at Samsung's new QLC flash memory technology which could potentially see 16TB SSDs be brought to market, reclaiming the storage density crown once again. So sit back and relax as we delve into the latest nano flash technology from Samsung. Now at the moment when it comes to the cutting edge of storage density, most high-end SSDs use what's called multi-level memory cells, otherwise known as MLC, <laughs> like MLC tech. <laughs> That's not, they're, they're not the same thing. My MLC stands for my initials. This is multi-level cell memory technology. But MLC has held the storage density crown as they can store more than one single bit of digital information at the same time. And they are considered the cornerstone of modern solid state drives. But Samsung is now about to introduce a new generation of SSDs based on quad level memory cells, that being QLC, providing an unprecedented level of density for storage applications. With it being said that Samsung has developed a new generation of QLC flash chips, which introduces 280 layers of a density of 28.5 gigabytes per square millimeter, which is absolutely crazy to see. Samsung's new QLC NAND flash version 9 chips are claimed to be 50% denser than the competition, providing the highest aerial density in flash memory chips to this day. Now, storage density isn't the only improvements that Samsung have been able to make out of these chips. The V9 of these QLC NAND flash chips are also said to be faster with a maximum transfer rate of 3.2 gigabits per second compared to 2.4 gigabits data rate provided by the previous generation. Now, the downside of QLC based SSDs is data transfer and performance is still an issue compared to TLC and MLC based SSDs. But at the same time, 3.2 gigabits per second throughput should be more than enough to make these new chips a compelling solution for PCIe based and NVMe solid state drives. And the massive advantage that Samsung have when it comes to the new era of QLC is that Samsung could soon be selling 16 terabyte M.2 SSDs, which oh, that would be absolutely crazy to see 16 terabytes on something like this size is just Oh my God, that would be so awesome to put into the system as a mass storage drive. Though I expect to be paying a pretty penny for that. Now Samsung has repeatedly stated many times before that QLC NAND flash chips are the future of solid state storage as TLC memory chips are quickly reaching the maximum raw capacity that they can achieve. Though the higher unprecedented service density provided by the new QLC chips from Samsung would overall bring low cost to the manufacturing process as they're having to produce less overall chips in order to make the same capacity. So the raw cost of material and also development time and manufacturing time of these SSDs will be less due to the requirement of less components and less parts overall. So that scale in production could make these SSDs cheaper to produce and cheaper for us to buy in the long term. Though it's important to note with these new QLC chips, the raw speed of these still isn't on par with modern high-end consumer NVMe SSDs that uses other memory NAND flash technology which Samsung also do sell themselves. Current QLC based SSD storage employs large cache memories that can take 25% of the total storage capacity of the drive, which easing the performance issue slightly off this drive. But when this cache pool is filled up on these drives, write speeds can dramatically collapse and can fall back to subpar SATA levels, that being the 100 to 300 megabytes per second range. So there are still some significant performance concerns when it comes to QLC based storage, but if they're dramatically able to scale up the density and the capacity of these drives, then it could potentially mitigate some of the risk of that performance degradation, but it's still a concerning factor when it comes to people who want that maximum high speed performance out of these drives. Though the increased storage capacity and the increased speed should be enough for most consumers, and quite frankly, I'd be more than happy with these drives if I was to buy a QLC based drive with the intention of it being a mass storage drive. Um, personally, for a boot drive, I'd buy a smaller capacity, much faster SSD for my primary boot drive and add external drives with large capacity, but slightly less speed compared to my boot drive for the rest of my drives, as quite frankly, they won't take advantage of that high speed, unlike my operating system and primary applications that I use will. Now, Samsung isn't the only competition out there when it comes to QLC-based storage devices. Other memory manufacturers include the likes of Micron, 
which has also developed a new form of QLC storage, that being a 322 layer QLC chip for a 19.5 gigabyte storage density per square millimeter. So Samsung still have the crown when it comes to storage density. YMTC is also developing a record QLC memory solution with 332 layers and 20.62 gigabyte density per square millimeter as well. So there's gonna be some tough competition from Samsung to beat when it comes to the QLC based storage out there. Now, of course, storage density alone isn't the most important factor. If YMTC or Micron can come out with QLC chips, which have slightly lower storage density, but greater performance, then that could potentially be a compelling reason for people to go with another QLC based SSD opposed to Samsung solution. Though it remains to be seen and we won't know the real world performance of all of these new drives until we actually have them in our hands and can actually run some tests on them. Though I'm super excited and quite frankly the prospect of getting a large capacity QLC drive for an M.2 form factor I'm super excited to see and would love to pick one up later this year when they launch. And of course I would love to also test them out to make an awesome video for you guys at home as quite frankly I'm super excited and super interested so I would love to present you my own review of these drives when I get them. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's video on this topic. Let me know all your thoughts and opinions around this in the comments down below. What do you think of Samsung's new QLC storage? And will you be opting to pick up a large capacity drive with this new QLC NAND flash? If it could mean at a slight performance hit when it comes to theoretical bandwidth and throughput. Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on this in the comments down below. Anyway, I have been Madison Charlton from MLC Tech. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like this in any way, shape or form, make sure to give this video a like and maybe subscribe for more content like this in the future. Anyway, thank you once again for watching today's video and I hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye for now.